Here on the Car Guru's UK YouTube channel, we are lucky enough to get to review some of the world's most exciting cars, Aston Martins, Porsches, BMWs, Mercedes, and on it goes. For today's assignment, however, I'm gonna look at something at the opposite end of the motoring spectrum, a car that was bought for less than the price of a smartphone. And here it is. Meet the 2004 Kia Picanto 1 litre, or possibly 1.1 litre. Isn't it a beauty? For some context, this car was purchased two years ago by a fellow Car Gurus contributor and has since been used to teach two of his family members how to drive. But why do we deem it worthy of its own video? 363, that's why, because 363 was a number of pounds that our Car Gurus contributor handed over two years ago for this fine vehicle. Now that's the sort of money that you might spend on a weekend away, or it's probably less than a lot of people spend on takeaway coffees every year. But in this case, it bought a whole car with pistons and five doors and a surprisingly spacious rear passenger compartment. This then, in a world seemingly full of million pound hypercars, is our small tribute to the simple pleasures of motoring on a shoestring. A couple of myths to bust here. The first is that you are always going to be better off buying a car this cheap via a private sale direct from its previous owner. Not necessarily. This car, for example, was purchased from a dealer who had taken it in part exchange for something bigger and less scruffy and simply wanted to get rid of it. Second, that any car costing £500 or less is going to have done a mega mileage and come with no history. Again, not always the case. This Kia, for example, had done just 52,000 miles and came with a stack of invoices that included one for a recent cam belt. Two years, 10,000 miles, two services and one replaced ABS sensor later. It still works and it's got through its last two MOTs passing first time. Of course, along with those good points, there are some less flattering aspects to this particular Picanto, not least that it is not a cosmetically perfect machine by any stretch of the imagination. It might look scruffy, including a rather loose roof lining, but this Kia is actually very well equipped for the small car. It's got electric windows, front and rear. It's got electric wing mirrors. It's got air conditioning, remote central locking. And it doesn't even smell in here, which for some reason I kind of thought it might. What's more, everything still works. Well, I'd say everything still works. The volume control on the stereo doesn't work and the air con needs a regas. But apart from that, everything still works. It even starts first time. So, the driving experience. Let's point out here that this car is from an age long before the days when Kia considered exciting and involving driving dynamics as part of its repertoire, as it does with some of its cars nowadays. And also, of course, it is far from factory fresh anyway. And so, while I think the steering is somehow connected to what the front wheels are doing, I'm not sure whether the column itself is made from metal or perhaps rubber, and also, the body lean in corners is comical. On the upside, the engine is actually quite perky. Now, when I asked my friend what the engine was in this car, he wasn't sure if it is the one litre or the 1.1. So I'm going to try and find out with an acceleration run. Henry? Yep. Hit it with the timer. OK. Ready, set, go. OK, now I look this up. And I know that the one litre has 60 horsepower and could do 0 to 60 in 15.9 seconds, or at 50 miles an hour. The 1.1 has 64 brake horsepower and could do it in 14.6. That looks 60 on the speedometer. We there, Henry? Come on, we've got to be there. Oh my yes, God. Yes, we got it. No. <laughs> what was it? 18.95 seconds. <laughs> 18.95. Okay, we'll put some of that down to a bad start. Um, and we'll say it's possibly a one litre. One thing I will say is that throttle response in this car is really quite, quite good. It's not since I last drove a Honda Integra Type R that I think I had quite such good throttle response. And because it only weighs 900 kilograms, 
this car just generally feels very responsive. In fact, throwing the amount of missing trim, it's probably more like 870, 860. As a small, light car with a tiny engine, the Picanto is also predictably economical. It's also cheap to insure, one of the cheapest, in fact. And, you know, in its own simple, uncomplicated way, there's something quite charming about driving this Picanto. And who cares, really, if the ride is bouncy and it's not very good on the motorway, because actually at this end of the motoring spectrum, what matters more is how long your fuel lasts and how reliable the car is going to be. And in both of those regards, small, simple, lightweight machines like this Picanto can be outstanding buys. Even the owner of this old Kia will freely admit that it is one of the ugliest cars he has ever seen. But he will also tell you just how impressed he's been with what such a small sum of money can buy. And you know, I know what he means, because while this car is not desirable in any rational way, shape or form, there is also something about it, something honest, that is really quite brilliant. Don't you just love cars? If you've been watching this video wondering where Dan Prosser and all the hot hatches are, then fear not, normal service will be resumed in our next video. In the meantime, please do subscribe and switch on those notifications. And remember, when it comes to looking for your next car, be it £300 or £300,000, cargurus.co.uk is the place to find great deals from top-rated dealers.